hearing other people's burps is actually disgusting and I like didn't know that when I was young and I would just like burp all the time thought it was the coolest thing in the world it's not (laughs) hi welcome back to human to human I am doing a little no video episode on a Sunday morning right before this episode goes out because I was feeling inspired. I recorded a few episodes on Friday a couple days ago, but I just realized that I really struggle to record episodes when I'm going through something and trying to like figure things out on my own and I don't quite have any answers yet. And these past couple days just have really helped me gain some answers about some things I've been thinking about and then it's like boom the floodgates are open and I want to share some things that have been really helping me when I'm like in a stuck point it feels like but first obviously TMI talk and I'm just going to go off of that little burp moment convo we're having because I just when I I always do a testing before I start recording and I just said um like welcome burp to human to human and I burped that was my that was my burp and I recorded it and then played it back and I was like yep audio sounds good but I'm like ew I would never keep that in because burps are gross like hearing someone else burp is gross but when I was growing up I didn't think they were gross and I didn't know the the origins of that until I basically stopped burping rudely in front of people (laughs) and then went to this birthday party like years in between not seeing these friends at this birthday party and saw this like guy that I grew up with doing musical theater with and noticed that he burped constantly and I was like um okay wait you're the reason I thought burping out loud was cool and I saw him at like 23 and I was like okay, wait, this isn't cute anymore. Why are you still burping? And I just had that moment of like, oh, okay. So I was like so rudely, loudly burping all the time because I thought this guy was cute and cool. And so I thought that was like cute and cool to burp out loud. And I'm embarrassed to think about me in grade seven with my grade seven boyfriend burping and him being like, why are you doing that? Like, stop. I'm cringing. It's okay. We all have our weird moments. It's fine. (laughs) I also have a family member who burps and farts constantly. And whenever this family member visits us, we're like, what is up with this? And my parents and I have even talked about like, what does this person do when they're in their workplace? You can't be burping and farting in your workplace. Like what the actual fuck? (laughs) So there's been a lot of themes for me in the past few days surrounding friendship male friendship kind of versus female friendship which is very interesting and I'm feeling insanely grateful one to be a woman two to experience female friendships and three just to experience really incredible friendships that help me especially when I'm in a period of time where I'm like what is happening with my life and I just want to normalize that feeling because I feel as though wow I'm feeling a lot of things clearly I feel as though I have that often and if you're a regular listener you might be like wow she's constantly talking about trying to figure out her life and I've had people say to me before like you have your shit figured out and like a really common theme coming up lately is like you're so young like how do you have your shit together so young or like how have you accomplished this much so young or how are you you know good at navigating social situations at your age like it really throws us off and I don't know what to say to that but um we are all in our own space and time. So like, let's not like dive into that. Cause like, how am I supposed to come up with an answer to that? I could like get really philosophical and be like, well, when I did musical theater and I was eight years old, I was put into a class of 10 to 12 year olds by accident. And that probably furthered my psychological development. And it's like, okay, yeah, whatever, who cares? But I, so I did record an episode all about my boyfriend's sister's wedding that just happened and stay tuned. It hopefully may might could potentially come out um but since then it's been a week since her wedding I definitely have felt like a low a low like after a huge social event too I think it's normal to just feel low uh but that had been consuming so much of our mind and our thoughts and our daily life um 
and it was funny i was talking to a friend yesterday and she was like why is this so like involved in your life why is this such a thing in your life and i'm like well think about it and i painted a picture for her i was like imagine if your brother was getting married imagine how many people would be coming to stay at your house to visit and imagine that like your brother's the groom he's so busy no one can talk to the groom so everyone wants to talk to the next best thing and that's the sibling and then i'm like now imagine your boyfriend during this time and his experience of this because like he's your closest person and she was like oh she's like honestly i think i would just tell him to stay away because this would just be so so much you know going on at once and i was like yeah so that's what my life has been like but the past week it's been calm because my boyfriend's still hanging with his family. I'm back to my normal life in my apartment. And, you know, we were doing dance practice all the time. There was a lot going on. So I have a lot more free time than I had in the past two months. And some shit comes up. Some shit comes up. You start to realize, like, how am I feeling in my daily life? How am I feeling with my living? How am I feeling with my job? How am I feeling with my friendships? How am I feeling with my relationship with myself? A lot starts to come to the surface. And I have just been feeling a bit stuck and also very much missing my boyfriend, very much missing, like, our normal life together where we see each other a couple times a week and, you know, we have our quality time. And so it's been hard and I've been just trying to process different things, things that feel good, things that don't feel good, how to navigate it. And OMG, female friendships. Like, I felt all the breakthroughs with this stuckness in my body that I couldn't quite label when I hung out with a friend and we had such a lovely downtown walk around the city day. It was so much fun and I forgot how good it feels to have a friend who's known you for so long where you just feel like you can go off and just rant and vent and just be so open about what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. And I actually said this to my roommate that like in a past situation, I could have labeled this friend as like, oh, I always go to go to that friend to complain. But now I'm like, no, it's not that I go to that friend to complain. It's the fact that I feel safe enough with that friend to lay it out all on the line and just not have a filter and not feel like I need to pretend everything's okay and like pardon the a human to human reference here but like be fully human with her and just not need to put on a mask and so getting to hang out with her for like multiple hours which you know now that a lot of my myself and my friends are stepping into adulthood and working full time you don't often have a lot of hours to just hang but the longer a hang goes on sometimes in this experience for me was like the more my walls got to come down so at the very end of our hangout after we'd been like downtown and exploring and vibing and eating it was in the last hour of hanging out where I really started to go off about something in my life and she validated me and I was able to be like whoa 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 I like got back to my apartment and was like holy fucking shit I feel like this like shook shook my world a little and I just said like I love you thank you for such a great hangout like I needed that and then I found a couple days later I was crying in my room and I was just like in a really low point and acknowledging how exhausted I feel and how tired I am and a lot of this has to do with like how financially taxing it is to move out of your parents house and need to pay for every single thing and even though I'm keeping track of my expenses and have you know a supplementary income on top of my full-time job it's just it's so hard when you sit with yourself and you're like how am I working this hard and it's still not enough and that friend that I hung out with who helped me have those breakthroughs we ended up texting it was a Friday night but she was responding to my text and we were going back and forth and she was just there for me and I felt so fucking seen oh my heart just feels like it's like expanding and if you've been here for a long time you know how I've struggled with friendships and getting to a place where I feel the women in my life are such genuine loving friends who I'm not worried are talking behind my back I'm not worried that they don't like me I'm not worried that I'm annoying around them like it's just such a relief and it takes so much effort it takes a long time to get to a place like that it takes a lot of grief and friendship breakups sometimes which is like so real in your 20s like 
I feel like the more people I meet, the more people are like, yep, I'm going through some friendship breakups or like, yep, I just struggled with that so much. And it's like so beautiful to feel like I'm on the other end of that. And I can go to people in my life who I consider really good friends and just feel so me. And I just hope that this is if if you don't feel this way, that this is an encouragement that like you can feel that way with people in your life and like you don't need to surround yourself by people who don't make you feel good. And so it's funny in the midst of this, I also ended up chatting with a guy friend of mine and I was supporting him. It was so beautiful. He reached out to me. He said, I'm struggling. Can we have a chat? And so we FaceTimed and it's so wild, the comparison between male friendships and female friendships. Um, I'm so grateful this friend reached out to me because I went on this like drunk rant at the very end of the wedding when we were walking back from the reception to the hotel and I was just like going in on one guy friend of mine and was like you need to reach out to your boys we know you're struggling we're here for you we fucking love you and you know when you're drunk you're like going off about it and another friend was a part of this walk and that was the friend that reached out to me I'm like okay clearly my rant that wasn't directed at you did hit you though so like bless up and this friend this guy friend and I were really just going into the fact that like he feels more comfortable reaching out to me to vent and to be emotional than he does to his guy friends and me also like working for a therapy practice obviously being the biggest therapy advocate started this podcast because I started therapy like all the things Every time, like, an incredible friend of mine, especially a guy friend, is, like, telling me some stuff they're going through. And, like, obviously, I can't solve their problems. Obviously, I'm not a trained therapist. Obviously, there's only so much a friendship can do. I'm like, here's a link. Please consider seeing a therapist. I would never judge you. I would tell anybody, like you need more support with this. I'm not a professional. And I also know you're not talking to many other people, if not anyone else but me about this. So, like, please, you deserve genuine support. And so I hung out with another really amazing friend yesterday and her and I got to a point where I feel like in our conversation, she was like so incredible. We talked so much about, you know, the financial stress I've been feeling and all the other stress I'm going through. And I feel like with her, I got to a point where I was excited, excited about the change that's coming and the way I'm going to be able to show up for myself, advocate for myself and make sure I'm in a place where I'm financially okay. Because before then, I was just like in such a hole, feeling so much stress every day, just feeling hopeless, feeling frustrated that, you know, being an adult means you really have to push for what you want. And her, she showed up and we started talking about this stuff and she just came from such a place of like, this is awesome, Jess. And like, this is exciting and your future is bright and there's so much opportunity in your life. And I was like wow like thank you like friendships bring perspective being around people we feel safe around like it makes me so grateful it like shows us that we can shift our mood and shift our energy and especially in a week where I'm deeply missing my partner and I can turn to the women in my life and feel so so supported like as soon as I started going into this week after the wedding and knowing my boyfriend's busy and all that I was like I need to make my own plans like now that the wedding's over like it's just time like it's time that I prioritize myself and my own needs and I come back to my life because I haven't gotten to hang out with my friends in a while so I like reached out to my favorite girls and like made the plans and just like got the self-care in check like went to a workout class went to a yoga class my gym oh my god my gym in my building opened I posted a little Instagram story at human human pod about it but like (gasps) it's changing everything I my roommate and I went on the best long walk another incredible female friendship love her we went on the best long walk after I got back from the wedding and like I told her everything and we debriefed so much and then her and I had a real moment where we were both like we need this gym in our building to open like a little backstory if you don't know her and I moved in about two and a half months ago we got a good deal on rent uh, because a lot of the amenities aren't finished it's a brand new building so you know for the first two and a half months the bu- the gym wasn't open a lot of the amenities are, are still not open um, and it's also crazy <laughs> when her and I we talked about this recently we're like yes we have a good deal on rent But the amount we pay in rent, no matter how you spin it, is still a lot of money. 
that is stressful to come up with every month. Like, yeah, we can paint the picture in every fucking way. It's a new building. The gym's great. All this stuff. But it's like, it's still a lot of money for people who don't make a lot. We are both in our early 20s. We're both relatively new grads. And we both work in creative industries, which I love it. My friend yesterday was like, that doesn't mean you can't get paid well if you're working in a creative industry. And I was like, yes. And my roommate and I were just like, for our own mental health, like we need this gym to open. And like her and I are both in a place of like, we can't be buying workout classes all the time. Like we can't afford it. And that is so suffocating because you're like something that would change my mental health drastically. I don't feel like I can afford like, oh, it's so deep. It goes so far. Um, All of this to say, though, we need friends. We need people. We need support. We can't go through this all alone. I'm going to go on a community rant in a minute, but like just a, a crazy transformation for me yesterday. It was Saturday. I went to, I'll go on the community rant right now, actually, because I went to this yoga two year celebration of my friend Miriam Yin with me on Instagram. She's done yoga. She's taught yoga for two years. It was so beautiful. She brought together people who all lived in our neighborhood, which was so cool. We did a park yoga sesh. If you are into yoga and have never done yoga outside, find a way to do it outside, especially it being guided. Cause I was like, I wouldn't go to a park alone and just do yoga. Like that would be scary because people would stare at me and I'm a woman but like her guiding us she literally was like close your eyes if you feel comfortable I'm looking out for you I'm making sure you're safe I was like thank you and then afterwards we all like hung out I met a ton of people who live in my neighborhood I left that event with such a full heart and just feeling like community is everything and when you move into a new neighborhood it's it's especially important and I was just like, wow, like I felt so much anxiety on Saturday morning when I woke up, but going to that event just made me feel so good. And then I, I, to be honest, when I got home after I felt more anxiety and got stoned and was just like a a blob on my couch watching Vanderpump Rules, honestly loving this season, but was just like not in a good place. My boyfriend called me. We got to have a good chat because I haven't really talked to him a lot lately. I cried about the things I was feeling. But then like my friend and I had plans and I was like, honestly, I don't feel up to like coming all the way to where you live because it was like an hour commute. And she's like, oh, like actually I can drive downtown. And she came over. And so I was like, okay, I'm getting my shit together. I am going to the gym because the gym is open now. And like what a fucking tool and an asset to use to be able to like shift around my mental health, like obsessed with that. And then I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my shit together. And so I went to the gym. I've never worked out stoned. It was like kind of fun. Um, and then I like put on makeup and she came and I just like shifted my whole energy and my mood. And it was just such a reminder that like we are in control. We do need to sit in the suck. Sometimes we do need to feel the hard feelings, But then we need to pick ourselves up. We need to get some movement in our life. Doesn't need to be the gym. Just needs to be some way to physically move the stress out of your body. I literally like Snapchatted my boyfriend and I was like, Josh, you taught me how to release my anger through lifting weights and going to the gym and moving my body. Because when I was going through friendship stuff, he was like, I love you come to the gym with me because this anger being stored in your body is not healthy. And I was like, oh, thank you. I literally cried when I like pushed a big thing of weights with my legs. (laughs) I don't know the technical term. You don't need to know what the actual exercise was. Who fucking cares? Um, And and yeah, like we need the support. And so I'm going to go on the rant that I went on when I was drunk to a male friend, to the males listening, because you need it. You need the support. You need to talk about your feelings personally, I think. I mean, like, no one can tell you what you need but you. But, like, mm, I just, like, love, I love male tears. They're my favorite kind of tears. They are the sweetest cry moments I've ever seen in my life. I, I just have such a soft spot for men getting emotional. And I just know that it's rare to be able to speak emotionally from guy to guy. And it's, like... What I was going to say about like referring all my male friends to go to therapy is like so many of them are like, oh, I would speak to a woman therapist before I'd ever speak to a man. And I'm like, damn, because like I'm so biased. I assume like you would want to speak to someone who like looks like you or has a similar like 
experience to you and like for me it was always like same gender because like I don't want to talk to a male therapist that's scary but it's like okay maybe men feel the same way then maybe women are just like easier to open up to and if that's the case you don't necessarily need to go talk to all your male friends about your emotions but like reach out to the female friends and like not only reach out to the female friends but like fucking hold space for your female friends too because it sucks sometimes as a woman to feel like you're just someone's emotional like support and that's all they use you for and like they don't care about your emotions at the end of the day either like I get it we all get sucked into our own worlds but like if you are going to a friend to vent make sure you also hold space for that friend maybe not even in that moment but like couple days later don't just call them and be like can I talk to you about my problems like make sure you also check in on how that friend is doing and I'm gonna go on another rant because this is what we're here for this is human to human okay I'm just this is like I made this I can go off I feel for women in heterosexual relationships as well and actively have tried not to play this role in my current relationship of wearing so many hats to your partner because I remember when I was in high school and I was in a relationship, I felt like I was that boyfriend's girlfriend. I was the friend. I was a therapist. I was his mom. I was just playing so many roles that like I didn't need to play. And I am so here to hold space for the men in my life. But at the end of the day, I'm not a therapist. I don't want to be a therapist. And you would get a lot out of speaking to a therapist, hopefully, potentially, if you, you know, find your right match, that I can't provide for you. And so I think we need to take some burden off of the women in our life and like, yes, use them for support and like appreciate them and love on them and like tell them how much you care about them and tell them how much you mean to them. And I know like men listening and they're like, oh my God, this is so much emotion. I like, can't even. Uh. It's like, shut up. Okay. We're all going through shit. And you as a man have been so conditioned by our society to not be emotional. And even like physically, ancestrally, men are here to provide. Men are here to be the breadwinner. And in, like, res I respect that. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I deeply respect the role that the men in my life play. I respect the testosterone energy, all of that. And you are also a human being who has emotions. You are also someone who you know, is going through things at different points in their life and need support and deserve support. But newsflash, you don't really get support unless you ask for it. We're all in our own lives. We're all in our own worlds. We're all going through our own stuff. And so your friends aren't going to always know to call and say, hey, how are you doing? But if you reach out and say, I need you, and your friend has the emotional capacity and you don't need to say the words I need you. It could be like, bro, let's like go on a walk or like, let's go play some basketball. And then you like talk about your emotions there. Like, it's fine. You can like, just like segue, like casually slip those emotions in. And if your friend has the emotional space to hold for you, like they will hold it for you and they will show up for you. If like, you know, one of my guy friends gave me an inch and I took a mile in the sense of like a good thing. Like he gave me the inch of like, I need help, but like, from there, I knew he wasn't going to be the one to call me. I knew he wasn't going to, like, follow up on how to, like, talk to me about his feelings because, yeah, you know, men get scared and that's okay. I respect you. And so I, I went out of my way to call him and make sure I was like, what's going on? Like, let's talk. Like, sure. You said you want to hang out in person. I can't hang out in person. Let's talk right now. And a good friend will do that for you. But you need to tell the friend you need them. And so even with my girlfriends that I hung out with this week, I didn't even say like, hey, I need you. It was more like, hey, when are you free? Let's hang out. Let's catch up. And then it just so happened that I was like, oh my God, you guys are like the best and I didn't realize how much I needed you. So like friendships are so valuable in our lives and you can't just have one person you lean on. Like obviously my boyfriend is someone I go to for so much of what I'm experiencing. My mom is someone I do too. But like I see, especially for my mom, like, the weight of that at a certain point like I can acknowledge like she can only talk about what my same problems so much and so being able to gain new perspective from different people is fucking epic and like we can have a well-rounded support system but it takes 
effort. It takes seeking community. And it's funny because I've like daydreamed about like I could move to a different city (laughs) because now I'm like I have so much more knowledge and experience on like how to seek community than I ever have before, how to seek friendship. And it does take a long time to go from a brand new friend to someone you trust deeply. But I actually like I made a new friend in the fall, Miriam, and literally yesterday celebrated her two years of yoga teaching and feel so close to her and so sometimes it's just about finding the right people and being vulnerable enough to put yourself out there and share and at the yoga event yesterday I met a guy who is in therapy and does yoga so like and he was a very masculine man okay so there are men out there you can stretch you can do good things for your mental health you can work on yourself you can talk about your emotions you can seek support and still be manly af (laughs) okay so i just appreciate you listening so much i'm so grateful that i get to live this life i'm so grateful that i get to have friends like this in my life it's it's not a place that we are always in constantly you know friendships ebb and flow they go through ups and downs that's normal but to be able to sit back and go like i have people i can reach out to use them man use them use them in a way that feels so like loving and mutually beneficial you know don't have a one-sided friendship fuck that that's not a good feeling (laughs) um if you enjoyed this episode uh please share it with a friend or share it on social media it genuinely means so much to me i love doing this and i also want to continue speaking about topics you care about if you feel inclined i really really would love if you anonymously submitted a tmi story so i could share something silly or just ask a a question ask a question on my website humanhumanpod.com the links in the show notes and tell me what you want me to talk about tell me what's going on in your life and i will give a little two cents if i have some um, and make sure you keep up with me on instagram and tiktok at human human pod in the meantime and take care of yourself know you always have support it's just about telling the support you need it okay i'll talk to you soon love you